guys welcome back to all in the law uh, today I'm gonna talk about this very important topic that's um, JVD JVD that's a jugular venous distension this is a really very important topic for a USML examination and for even for a practical examination so let me start to uh, discuss on this uh, JVD I request you to subscribe to our channel and please do share our videos with your friends okay guys so let me start with uh, this uh, beautiful uh, um, topic that's a uh, JVD so the JVD is nothing but a jugular venous distensions this the, there is an internal jugular vein we observe at the internal jugular vein internal jugular vein internal jugular vein we observe internal jugular vein at sternocleidomastoid muscle sternocleidomastoid muscle okay guys so we observe at this and the patient should be at the 45 degree angle this is a 90 degree bed the head is here and the legs and the arms okay he should be what you call not 45 degree this should be his position and observe the what you call uh, the neck is here okay so you can observe what you call uh, JVD over here you need to observe laterally and you need to see any distension so what is the normal value let me change the color the normal JVD normal is less than 3 centimeter less than 3 centimeter remember okay if there is any distinction more than 3 centimeter then it's a pathological it could be due to the uh, heart disease or the lung disease so JVD helps us to distinguish between the heart and the lung diseases so now the important things what you should know is this what you call is a graph that's a waveform we have a three positive veins okay and the two negative waves the positive waves are a c and a v the negative are x and a y okay guys a c and a v x and a y are negative so let me change the color and let me move on to the next important topic now the actual graph how it looks like remember this is a this is c x v and a y a c x y eh, sorry v and a y right so look at this this and uh, look at this both are negative right and these are the positive they are positive the positive waves and the negative waves so let me start with the dis discussion of a wave and show you and discuss about a wave what it is okay now we discuss with the a wave remember this is very important a wave corresponds to the right atrial right atrial contraction right atrial contractions so this is your heart okay so this is right atrium right so this is left atrium left this is a right ventricle right and this is left ventricle right or left so this is when this way this uh, chamber or this part of the heart goes into the contraction then you'll see the rise in the venous pressure so let me change the color so you'll see this is uh, what you call uh, here you have inferior vena cava and this is a superior vena cava right superior vena cava so you can see your superior vena cava inferior vena cava internal jugular vein you will get over here so when there is a rise in the pressure this pressure will be reflected to the superior vena cava through superior vena cava it will be reflected to the right uh, internal jugular vein when this increases it causes increase in the JVD okay guys so this is a really very important okay so let me start to discuss about this and uh, show you uh, right atrial pressure uh, contraction so a waves is nothing but right atrial contraction okay guys 
So now, because of the contraction, you will see the wave like this, positive A. Now let me move on to the posit next positive wave, that's nothing but a C, okay, the C wave. The C wave corresponds to the right ventricular contraction, right ventricular contraction, right ventricular contraction. Okay, so C wave is nothing but a right ventricular contraction causing tricuspid wall to bulge. So nothing but tricuspid wall bulging. Remember, this is very important. Bulging of the tricuspid wall. Let me show you. So this is a heart. Okay. So when this is a right ventricle, right? So this is a right atrium. So when there is a pressure, this is a tricuspid wall. When there is a pressure, when this, uh, what do you call uh, this, right, eight, right ventricle uh, goes into contraction, when this goes under the contraction, the pressure increases and this pressure causes the bulging of what you call uh, tricuspid. And this is called as, this leads to the form, this leads to the waveform that is a C wave. Okay guys, so this is what exactly what is a C wave is. So let me move on to the next wave that is a X. This is a negative wave. Why this is a negative wave? This is because of the downward displacement of the tricuspid. Downward. Downward. Displacement. Downward displacement of tricuspid. Wow, TCV. Okay guys, sorry. So downward displacement of the tricuspid wall. Why it happens? is because of a right ventricle pulling the tricuspid wall downwards during a ventricular system. Okay, so this is really very important. So, because of this, the X wave takes place. So, you got it now idea? This is a A wave, next positive is a C, then goes a downward displacement of the X, C and A, right? So, now let's start with the V wave, it's sorry, V wave, okay? The V wave, what is V wave is due to? V wave corresponds to the venous filling. It's a venous filling. Okay? Venous filling. When the tricuspid wall is closed. This is a tricuspid wall. Okay? That's when the tricuspid wall closes, there's a venous filling. Right? There's a venous filling. And this venous filling, venous and this is a venous filling when the tricuspid wall is closed and the venous pressure increases from venous return. This occurs during the following the carotid pulse and follow, following the carotid pulse. So very important. When it closes, the venous flow increases. When the venous flow increases in the right ventricle, the pressure increases. And because of this pressure, you will see the V wave. That's a third positive wave. Okay, guys. Clear? Now let me move on to the last wave. That is a Y wave. So Y wave corresponds to the end time rapid emptying of the right atrium into the ventricle following the opening the following the opening of tricuspid wall so remember just imagine the how the system works okay okay guys so now let me start with this again let me revise and tell you show you how it exactly acts so there are positive waves that are nothing but uh, A, C, V and X and Y are the negative waves. Okay guys. So this is about general idea. There is a test that is a hepato jugular test. Okay. So there are different tests you can see over here. So let me start with this and uh, again the important the conditions where you see the raised JVD with a normal waveform, raised JVD with absent pulsation, large A wave, canon A waves, absent A wave, large C V waves, slow Y descents, prominent and deep Y descent and a paradoxical JVD. So let me briefly tell you what are they exactly. Okay, let me start with the conditions. You need to tell me. Okay, now you understood the basics. What is a A wave? What is a C wave? V, X and a Y. Let me brief you slowly and let me show you a mnemonic how to remember. So A wave is nothing but atrial contraction, right? Contraction. There's no question of anything related to tricuspid wall in A wave. The C wave 
is due to the um uh, okay you tell me what is a c wave is c wave is nothing but a tricuspid bulging right tricuspid okay tricuspid bulging remember about the bulging okay so this is about the tricuspid bulging and the v wave is the tricuspid wall closing remember this when there's a bulging then move next closing and make your two fingers stick together and there's a bulging then move it downwards it closes then what happens then tcv that's a tricuspid wall downward displacement okay now move your both the fingers towards the down that's a downward displacement and the last one is just move further it causes tcv there's a tricuspid wall opening right so this is how you can remember the mnemonic for this uh, jugular venous distension okay guys so let me revise the conditions and let me tell you once again a wave is atrial contraction no questions of any tricuspid wall involvement c is tricuspid bulging v is tricuspid